will get, I think, this afternoon a lot of interesting insight. The first uh, speaker I would like to introduce is Professor Rüdiger Lolke. I met him for the first time in 2006 in Brussels when we were both members of the expert group on violent uh, radicalization that the European Commission uh, set in. He was professor for Oriental Studies, uh, Islamic Law, and in Göttingen before he came uh, to Vienna, where he fulfills a number of functions, like editor of Jihadika. He was also head of the Imam education here in Austria. I believe he still is. He has uh, published wildly, widely, not wildly. Uh, lately, he has uh, concentrated on what's happening on the internet, in the social media, and there he has uh, done some groundbreaking work. So I invite him to come uh, to the stage and share with us his insights. Thank you. Uh, thanks for. Uh, I'm trying not to be wild. <laughs> so, it, I've been asked to talk about the role of social media, or well, that's uh, what's officially a new layer of in modern warfare. That's the official title we've got. Yep, it's an interesting thing. It's. Uh, to talk about social media, the role of social media, but I'd like to start a little bit earlier. Whoop. Does everybody understand? A bit louder. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sick too, so it's. I don't know if my voice will will make it. I won't tell you anything about the situation in Syria. There are many distinguished speakers and participants here who, will, who are, uh, could do better than me in this case. So what I would like to reflect on is what we may call another victim of the Syrian tragedy, the truth. And I think this uh, issue is important for Syrians and non-Syrians alike, for sure. It is a truism that truth is the first victim of war. There's a long history of lies, deception, etc. in wartime, and we have many interesting examples, at least from scholars' we point of view, uh, in the region uh, we are talking about. At least some of us may remember the infamous hoax of uh, Iraqi soldiers taking babies out of incubators in Kuwait and leaving them to die. One interesting uh, example staged by a U.S. public relations firm. You might remember, you might remember the hunt for the weapons of mass destruction in Iraq as a legitimation for the invasion. And there is another example. There's this guy over there. Uh, who was talking, he was, let's say, he became famous for, as one observer said, standing above the truth. Uh, just when the American troops were just around the corner, he was telling the media just like the, uh, this kind of stuff. So uh, there's still a website online uh, uh, collecting his famous sayings. So we might say, Propaganda has been part and parcel of warfare throughout history since humans were able to proclaim, let's say, God is on our side, whatever God. Uh, but God is on our side. So it's propaganda all the time. But what's new with uh, social media? Uh, or is it just using new technical platforms to, let's say, for the same old purposes? Uh, we have been talking about we have been talking about Facebook revolutions, about Twitter revolutions, about YouTube revolution as it was applied to Syria sometime before. So we might think it, that may hint at a 
certain importance of uh, social media. There are th I think there are two messages uh, sent to us by using this, th these terms. Social media are of utmost importance, for sure. And for Europeans and non-Americans, it's the message, oh, the Arabs are able to use computers. <laughs> they are like us, oh, super. Uh, surprise, but uh, so it's a quite a Eurocentric point of view uh, and still prevalent, um, I think, in the sub uh, subtext of European and non uh, Northern American discussions. The first one has proven wrong and to a certain extent since the revolutions are still won or lost on the ground, not on the web, that's for sure. Uh, but what's left is that social media are useful if cleverly applied to a given situation. We have here the photographs around, and around us, uh, the lenses we have heard about yesterday, and I think these photographs are a very fine example for using social media for a creative uh, aim. I'm old enough to remember when the internet was starting, there were many discussions about a genuine democratic quality of the internet. Okay, we, now we know better. I'm not talking about the NSA or anything else, but it's uh, well known that the internet may be used for other purposes. And one of the important purposes the internet and the social media are used is what has been called the consumerization of warfare. Um, that's a concept formulated by two Italian colleagues and they were telling us uh, by the consumerization of warfare uh, we can say if the cyberspace is the fifth domain of war, social media are likely designed to be, become the major subdomain. So it's, that's what one of my colleagues uh, once said. Consumerization of warfare has been defined as the growing use of new technology such as social media and mobile phones in a new war format. And what's at stake is the reputation of the actors on the web. That's the contested space we have, and it may be a blast or a curse of the social networks that reputation may be destroyed or built up on the web. One of the most active groups in this field in Syria was and is the Syrian Electronic Army, and I will be talking about it uh, now. Uh, it's a, for those who do not know them, it's a group of hackers close to the government and the Syrian Computer Society, although the government from time to time tries to distance itself from the Syrian Electronic Army. Uh, but we'll see, it's just a war movement. The Electronic Army started its operation in 2011. Uh, there are claims. They started in 2010, but that's much more to individuals now active in the SEA. One of the most recent attacks on the, of this group was a hack of the CNN website and Twitter account on January 23 this year, posting mes messages like this. So you see it's quite the usual stuff they are posting, so terrorism, uh, the aiming at the destruction of the Syrian state, uh, Al-Qaeda fun, uh, funded by the CIA, and I think the last one is the most pertinent we have, uh, the stop lying, all your reports are fake, ma'am. Uh, they are trying to reproduce, reproduce once again and again. I'm coming back to it. And that's the reason why they're at attacking CNN and making posts like this. Uh, so it's all offline now, split. don't try to find it. Uh, but uh, sure, it's fake postings at the, uh, CNN. And uh, the most, I'll come back to the upper one, the declaration of national, national emergency in the US. Uh, it's uh, quite a traditional of the SEA by now. 
As I said, these postings are now deleted. And the Syrian Electronic Army has explained uh, the attacks as a punishment for the misinformation about Syria by CNN. There are a lot of tweets about it. Another recent hack was a little bit overstated, and that's what I was on yesterday. And that's why I was not here. Uh, the Syrian Electronic Army attacked on February 6th, yesterday, the website of Mark Monitor, a brand protection company. It's, you don't have to know the company. It's uh, where, among others, Facebook is registered. And uh, the uh, Electronic Army claimed we have been hacking Facebook. So it's not really what they have done. They have just hit the database of Mark Monitor, uh, where a lot of companies are hosted, and redirected the information to, as you might see here, to a Syrian address, and that's the usual email address of the Syrian Electronic Army by now. It has been, as I said, it has changed often. So, what are the aims of the Syrian Electronic Army? We, might say there are at least six. So it's, first of all, projecting a positive image of Bashar al-Assad and the Syrian government to the global media. The second, we have seen the example of CNN, is punishing media, providing false information about the Syrian inf uh, situation, punishing uh, political powers supporting the Syrian opposition, for example, Qatar, Saudi Arabia has been attacked, the US and Turkey, I'm coming back to it. Proving uh, the fourth one, they are, they are a potential danger for internet security. For sure, it's up to now, it's a nuisance for systems admins now. It's not really a danger. They are just causing trouble for the IT people of any company, but it's nothing really dangerous, but it remains, uh, what's, let's see, what's in the future for it. And fifth, creating an air of self-confidence for the supporters of the government. Let's say increasing steadfastness, identification with the, the government. And uh, sixth, I think it's, let's say, pampering their own ego. It's what all hackers like to do. We are the greatest hackers on ever available. So that's for sure one of the subjects we have. As to the fourth, uh, to the first point, I've taken some uh, screenshots from several uh, online uh, platforms uh, the SAA is using. So it's, the, it's projecting the idea that the Syrian army is, is protecting, uh, defending the mothers of Syria, Assad fighting the forces of evil. Uh, here, you'll see who it is, and it's quite difficult to, uh, I'm afraid what's down there, but it's interesting who is portrayed over there. The aim of uh, providing a positive image of Bashar al-Assad, so it's a kind of fan posting always appearing uh, during the actions of the operations of the Syrian Electronic Army. And as you see, the nice play of words over here and uh, trying to show we are powerful and even be careful if you are telling, not telling the truth about us. Uh, we have had an example for the second point. Uh, the third point here, a tweet on Qatar. Uh, so the usual one is Qatar financing terrorism. Uh, there are a lot, a lot of, men, um, of postings and tweets, etc., about Qatar. There has been uh, even a subdomain on the homepage of the Syrian Electronic Army providing information from hacked fax service of the Qatari government. If hundreds of pages of fax and uh, messages. Not really interesting. It's if you're interested in the working of the Qatari government or the foreign service, etc. If you're interested in knowing what 
presence uh, the Sheikh Musa has given to the UNESCO in Paris when visiting. Okay, it's interesting. Uh, if, uh, or, or which kind of SUE has been provided for the Jordanian embassy of Qatar. That's in it. It's not really, let's say, investigative uh, journalism. And they are providing it. It's just boring stuff. For the US, the most effective hack was commented as follows, quote, remember the day when the Associated Press uh, Twitter account said, breaking two explosions in the White House and Barack Obama is injured. Remember feeling uh, like the world was ending. Never mind that the style and syntax wasn't what uh, AP normally used and, uh, but within minutes it was retweeted 4,000 times. The stock market certainly had the little chicken mindset uh, and the Dow Jones had a huge, huge drop. And that's what the Syrian Electronic Army is still trying to play, causing another effect like this. Uh, okay, as we know, the stock market from, uh, at last discovered it's not really the truth they have been reading but it's uh, a certain effect we had. The fifth one, it's uh, the kind of uh, identification. I'm a Suri, I'm Syrian. And you have to be Syrian, a true Syrian, to join the Syrian Electronic Army, for sure. That's, uh, in my dear, propagated throughout all internet uh, platforms by the SAA. Uh, coming to another interesting point, it's a kind of what I'd like to call an eschatological appeal of the SEA. They are trying, sometimes they are trying to project the idea that the end of time is reaching. Syria has to be resurrected like this, or even maybe Judgment Day is approaching. Uh, uh, like this. So it would be interesting to follow if these kind of ideas of images are coming back and forth according to the up and down of the, of the finding on the ground. I, don't, I suspect it may be some kind of this. I may remind you once again of the idea God is on our side. You hear the Messiah is on the side of the Syrian government. Uh, there's sometimes even a kind of pubertal humor. One tweet read uh, in 2012, quote, Saudi weather station down due to head-on collision with Kemal. There were a lot of these kind of tweets. So it's, it's young men who are trying to publish this kind of tweets and this kind of humor they are using. To be sure, if it's questionable, if this kind of propaganda reaches some to somebody outside the restricted circle of supporters of the government, and we really may doubt if it's possible to reach anybody outside the circle of supporters, as you may see, in this screenshot from an attack, from a hack on uh, a website on the teeny star Justin Bieber. I'm afraid no teenage girl being a fan of Justin Bieber will turn uh, to be a fan of Bashar al-Assad by reading these kinds of uh, information. In general, we might say it's, I could give a lot of other examples, but I'm trying to stick it to, to the schedule. <laughs> the moderator is watching me. Uh, what it might say is how effective is this kind of, let's say, propaganda warfare? If you take as a currency the number of likes at Facebook, for instance, well, now the Syrian Electronic Army is, I think, at the official site number 273 at Facebook, the IT security is still fighting at closing down the sites. The SEA is opening up another one and counting up. So it's, when I started, I think it's the first one I saw was 198. 
so you might have an idea of what has been happening up to now. But uh, the likes they get at Facebook is around 20,000, 25,000, maybe 28,000 is the highest rate I've ever read. And that's comparing to the social media platforms used by the Syrian opposition, it's quite, it's not really a success. Let's say it's, if you read about 300,000, etc., and more likes, it, there has been a lot to be done by the Syrian Electronic Army to attract as many followers, evidently. And if you're looking at uh, Instagram, for instance, it's some 74 by now, and so on. I've, I won't uh, give, uh, talk about every platform they are active on. So we might down the efficiency of this kind of propaganda, but I think it what's efficient is the projection of the idea there is a way we have to be we can be proud of being supporters of the Syrian government. It's an inward-turning propaganda. It's not an outward-turning. There may be a certain attempt to uh, project a threat to the international community. Then, if you are not telling the truth, we may be disturbing your uh, usual work. At you. Maybe you journalists might know, might know Sometimes the controlling of your company might come across you and are telling you so right positively about Syria. They are still there. Costs are rising for IT security. I don't know if it's not the real reason behind it. It's just, uh, I think, an inboard propaganda we are facing. If I had about hours to speak, but I have to mention them, the other side of the Syrian conflict very consciously using uh, the internet propaganda for the purposes is for sure the jihadist side. Uh, the jihadists have been using the internet for years for propagating their views, but uh, since we have the pictures, the photographs all around us trying to give another idea of Syria, I won't talk about this picture of Syria fighting jihadis, etc. You can all see it on the media. And Thank you. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. We have time uh, for some uh, questions. This is uh, really a new aspect of war, though you can say it goes back to Goebbels and other propagandists that made use of radio very successfully. But let me remind you that Assad was uh, already since 1989 president of the Syrian Computer Society, so it's interesting, uh, maybe it was only a nominal presidency, uh, like he had many other titles. But uh, the question is, will cyber war really uh, amount to much? Uh, some years ago there was a fourth dimension of warfare space added to land war and sea war. Now we are already in the fifth dimension. And uh, what I notice is that basically there are more and more niche markets on the internet and you can get the truth that fits you, that is convenient to you and become quite blind to what's going on outside. So there is no real dialogue with that. We have. Uh, a couple of minutes for questions before we uh, start the next panel. Can I just see how many people would like to ask questions? One, oh, you're lucky. So your, it's your question immediately. Uh, can you speak up or do you need the microphone? So if you uh, thinking about uh, the tradition it's about the last day, so there's Syria playing a certain role, and that's quite natural for Syrians to 
refer to it. Uh, that's not, I, as far as I see, the activists uh, operating within the context of Syrian Electronic Army are, as far as I can judge from their names, they are uh, Muslims. So it's quite the appropriate uh, uh, selection of pictures. And maybe it's certain, let's say, selectivity using what's available on the web. It's a kind of, uh, they are using popular culture to a large extent, or so they are picking up, so that's fine, let's take it. And on the web, we have many Christian imaginary. So it's quite a statistics. Are there any more questions standing between you and the coffee break? Well, it's an unfair way of asking the questions. Uh, yeah, there is one question, too, two even, yeah? Discussing uh, any other jihadi groups, but it's they are trying busy with using sectarian imaginary, so it's killing the Alawites and, and so on. It's uh, blood dripping down, etc. So they're, they're quite busy in doing it, but it's, I think we, don't, we shouldn't discuss it now. <laughs> I saw one more hand in that corner. Can you identify yourself before you ask your question? As a Syrian, I just would, would like to explain some, something maybe from Syrian perspective. This, this kind of propaganda is absolutely uh, 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 without any influence for Syria. It's just to achieve like a virtual victory for Assad and not for all Assad. It's just non educated people who are so poor educated for people just to, to achieve some, some but it, it can just help to explain to us. How, how, how Assad people try to solve Syrian problems? So they are always the problem in some place and they try to, to solve it. For example, the people are blaming of corruption, they, they send some people to demonstrate in London. And uh, this way of, of thinking, because the problem is not about Qatar, or, uh, I, I was, I was in Israel, the people are talking about the corruption of some or relative of Assad, then they sent people to demonstrate, stupid people and uneducated people to demonstrate in front of Turkish embassy, for example. That's the mm. Yes, I would agree. It's, it's, like, it's an interesting material for studying the mindset of the people who are uh, producing it. That's maybe. And that's what uh, the virtual aspect. I, th I would agree, it's just the real life that counts. Well, that is one of the big questions of the whole uh, fifth dimension. What's the relationship between online and offline activities? Perhaps we can come back to that after the break. We have a 10 minutes uh, coffee break, and then we have a panel for uh, 90 minutes. And I hope to see you all back. <laughs>